Right. Well, uh, this is awkward. Last week there was a bit of an oopsie, where all of a sudden a whole bunch of computers just decided to stop working. And then planes couldn't fly anymore, buses couldn't drive anymore, and even hospitals just couldn't take care of people anymore. And all of this because one business antivirus decided to push an update that would just completely break computers. Like, oh, have you ever thought that you screwed up at work and it was really, really bad? Well, uh, at least it wasn't 8.5 million Windows devices in one single update. Now, it didn't really affect any home computer since this was a business antivirus. However, it does make you wonder, what is going on with my computer that someone else all the way across the world can just suddenly shut it down with a dumb update? Well, computers are very complex things that are somehow able to like come up with solutions and do all sorts of things only by running electricity for some wires and switches. So learning how all of this works all from scratch would just take you years and years of studying. So that is why we generally rely on the people who make these things to just tell us what it does. And if it does that, then it's fine. For example, take this very simple phone right here. We've seen this design forever now, but still I wouldn't know how to make one. If we take the box right here, we can see that the images line up. We can also see if we go to the background here, we can see that there is a certain amount of battery life, which you know, it, it does do. And then we can also see that it has like an LED torch. And then look at that. You know, there's a little flashlight and you know, it does what it says on the box right here. So I'm happy with it. However, over the last few years, it seems like what's on the box doesn't necessarily correspond anymore with what you're getting. This smartphone right here, when I bought it, came with this box right here, which has V30 on it. But then if I turn it on, what you're going to find is that it says uh, LG V30 FinQ. Obviously, it's gotten some sort of update to include more smart stuff and make it better. But as we saw just last week, updates don't necessarily have to make things better. They can also make things worse. After all, doing an update is just another way of saying making changes. And as long as I can decide what kind of changes I make on my device, it should be all right right? Well, here's the thing. Over the last few years, a lot of our devices have become so aggressive in changing whatever the hell they want without asking us if we want to change that as well. And Windows is the absolute freaking worst at this. Last year, I went on a pretty big trip to visit my family in Canada, and I decided obviously to record everything with my GoPro. And to make sure that I wouldn't lose all these precious memories by dunking my GoPro in the water and breaking it somehow, I would put all of the files right here on this computer over here. Until one day, I decided, stupidly enough, to leave this thing in the charger for too long, and guess what happened? It started to update itself. And then it gets stuck. And then there was nothing that I could do. Because you get this screen right here, which says, you know, it's working on updates and don't turn off your computer. Because, you know, it is working with your operating system, the base core component of your entire computer. So if you mess something up, if you turn this off and it corrupts a file, you could lose everything. And everything that was on here were some very precious vacation videos, which I hadn't backed up yet because I hadn't been home. I couldn't reshoot anymore because, you know, you can't retake one of those things. And I was about to lose them for what? A dumb update that I never asked for? It was at that time that I decided I want to have control over my computer. I don't want this to ever happen again. Now, where do you go if you want to have more control over Windows? The control panel. Well, um, if you go right here, you can see uh, there's system, there's network, there's programs, but um, there is nothing here about updates. So then let's go to this weird like Android looking settings thing that we have right here. Uh, we do see update right there. And then we have Windows update. Uh, and let's see what we can do. Uh, it says right here, we can pause update for seven days. Um, but it's only seven days. Um, let's go advanced options. So we have advanced options right here. We can uh, restart the device. Um, we can show notifications when the PC requires a restart. We can pause updates. You know, what if we want to do that? Well, you can only do that for about a month. But, uh, you know, where can I choose to turn them off? Where can I choose to, you know, select what I want and what I don't want? Where is my control? As it stands right now, Windows will update you no matter what you want. Oh, what's that? You don't want to have some sort of AI feature that records everything that you do on your PC, taking screenshots of everything, including your passwords? Oh, well, uh, too bad. You're getting it anyway. And what's that? You don't want to have literal advertisements in your start menu and your operating system that you paid 100 bucks for? Well, too bad. You're getting it anyway. For this reason alone, a lot of people recommend to switch your operating system over to something called Linux. Just like Windows, Linux allows you to run programs on your computer and generally comes with a standard interface that has like a start menu and a file system and it should look very familiar. 
However, unlike Windows, it will allow you to choose a whole bunch of different Linux distributions or different versions of Linux. All of these versions will have a lot more control allowing you to do what you want to do and they're free, which sounds fantastic, but there has to be a catch since, you know, otherwise everyone would use it. And that is the biggest problem with Linux right now. Not that many people use it, which makes it really hard for people who make software programs or hardware accessories for your computer to support anything on Linux. You can spend a whole bunch of money to make it work with one specific version of Linux, but then only very few people will actually use it. So is that worth your time and money? A lot of the things that I use every single day to make my videos and streams, like this stream deck over here, or this Rode audio interface, or a capture card, they don't really work with Linux at all. And that is a really big problem for me because as much as I like the idea of Linux and as much as I want to use it, I need it to work. If you just do standard things like web browsing or writing Word documents or Excel sheets, you should be totally fine with using Linux. And also for gaming, Linux has been getting so much better thanks to the Steam Deck, which natively comes with Linux installed. And because of that, you can run most games perfectly fine on Linux as you would on Windows. However, if Linux is not an option, then what do you do? There have been a lot of solutions online to tame Windows. One of which right here is called Atlas OS. In my last overtime, I went over Atlas OS and installed it to my brand new laptop. It's kind of a program that takes over Windows and strips out all of the invasive tracking and bloat stuff and also limits the updates and supposedly makes a computer run faster. However, this gets me to a very important thing. No, I don't really trust Windows all that much with all the unwanted stuff that they're putting in my computer without asking. However, how can I trust some random website on the internet right here that what they're going to be doing to my computer is going to be totally fine? Maybe because, you know, uh, it is a... Uh, uh, open source? Open source is often talked about as this pinnacle of safety for programs because it basically means that whoever made the program put the entire code of the program online so that everyone can go through it and see if there's something wrong with it. However, would you be able to spot if there's anything wrong right here in this code if you were to just glance through it like this? I know I can't, but maybe other people can. Well, if we go over to the post of their latest release on their GitHub and we scroll all the way down, we find that 75 people have reacted to this post right here, which was made four months ago. How many of those 75 people have the skill and have the time and have the energy to go over this entire thing and scrub it out for anything wrong? You don't know. Open source is a great way of ensuring transparency as it's like an open door that allows everyone to look inside and see what's going on. But if no one's looking inside that open door, it's kind of the same as a door being closed. I'm not saying that this solution here is in fact malicious. I mean, for all I know, it could be fine. But let us go and look at incentives. Making a program that takes Windows and gives you settings and options that Windows normally doesn't give to you and then making a better operating system out of it is something that is very hard. It takes a lot of skill, it takes a lot of time, and it takes a lot of training for someone to be able to do that. Things that you normally can make a good amount of money for. So what kind of incentives do these people here that make this have to make this a good program? Well, if we go right here and we want to download any of these things, we can just download it straight away because this here is completely free to download. So for most users, they're not receiving anything at all. Now you can support them via Kofi here, which is some sort of Patreon, uh, but if you go here, you see that they've only been tipped like 117 times, which is nice, but not enough by far not enough to support an entire team of developers. So then what's their incentive to spend so much time making this program and then giving it out for completely free? Is it really that they just wanna stick it to Windows and give you a much better experience? Or is there something more going on? Just like how social media seemed completely free where in fact we were actually the product. I'm not saying right here that these guys fall either way because very simply, I don't know. And that's the thing with all of these solutions or most of them is that you can't really tell like what kind of solution they are. Like, are they the great thing that you're looking for or are they malicious? I'm sorry if this is a bit of a boring, serious segment. However, I do feel this is something that is very important to me because in a lot of YouTube videos, these things are being shown around as like, oh man, this is such a cool thing you may want to try out, which may oftentimes sound like a strong recommendation for you to go and do it. I discovered Atlas OS because I was watching Linus Tech Tips where they'd taken an old computer and installed Atlas OS on it for fun. Now, I thought that this meant that they'd gone fully over it, gave their okay and full guarantee that, man, this is okay to use, go ahead, it's totally safe. However, most likely, what happened is, just like these videos, they research enough about the topic to be able to tell you about, like, say, hey, you know, this is the context, this is kind of cool, but then they move on to the next topic and, you know, they never really do the thorough investigation that something like this will need to give you a guarantee that this is 100% completely safe. So when it comes to online recommendations to make your life better, 
please just double check for yourself that what they're saying can be verified and that there are actual incentives to make sure that they give you what they promise to give you, especially when it comes to the operating system of your computer. As all of this started because we wanted to make sure that we kept our computer and our files safe. Speaking of security, one thing that updates do provide, which is very important, is in fact security. Like recently it was discovered that there was some sort of flaw within Windows that let people run code remotely on your PC via Wi-Fi, kind of like what we feared a couple months back with the Apex hacking situation. This vulnerability was only found within Windows and just given it a quick update should fix it entirely, so it's not too much to worry about. However, does this mean that my only option left is to go back to Windows and just stick with their non-consensual updates and take whatever features they want to shove down my throat because, you know, it's secure? Well, not really, actually. There is one single tool that I found which makes Windows bearable for me, at least for now. And that tool is called WinUtil. This right here is a program that allows you to like manage Windows in such a much better way than Microsoft ever gives you. Basically, this thing right here with all the options here is just the control panel, but better. This page right here allows you to install whatever programs you may want to install, which is super handy if you're setting up a couple new computers and you know you're gonna need things like Firefox, Discord, Steam, like you can just select all of the programs that you need right here. There's a really wide selection of them. And then if you go up here, you can just click install selected and it will just install all of it without you having to go to the website and then try and like find a download link. It's all in there. Where this program really shines is in the control options, which is right here in the tweaks tab where you can choose selected things like, let me say I want to create a restore point so I can always go back to an earlier version of Windows if I screw something up. And then you have things like, I want to disable telemetry so I'm not always being tracked. I want to disable location tracking. You know, I can choose all these things right here. I can even say, I don't want Bing search in my start menu. I want to make sure that I have the dark theme everywhere. But the real party piece is what you see right here is you can choose which setting of updates you want to have. You can have the default settings, which are just, you know, the same window setting as you always have. You can have security settings where you only get the security updates, but not like the feature updates or the AI stuff and everything. Or you can just like turn off updates altogether. Like you can choose, which sounds fantastic, but why should you trust this program any more than the Atlas OS that I was just talking about? I mean, didn't I just say that any YouTube recommendations are something that you should be very wary of? Exactly. That's why I'm not recommending this program at all. I'm not giving this my security guarantee. It's totally fine to download because I can't do that. I can't tell you that this program is 100% safe. What I can do is tell you my reasons why I trust this thing right here. This program here is made by a guy called Chris Tidistek, who is a YouTuber here on YouTube, who also has 10 years of experience in IT, which you can find right here on his LinkedIn. This shows me number one, that this is a guy who provably knows what he's doing. And two, is a guy who actually is putting his name and his reputation out there. But even so, how do I know that right now, what he's doing is okay? That's where open source does come in. Because remember how I said that an open door is only good as long as people are watching it? This guy right here has 621,000 people subscribed to his channel and about 20 to 60,000 people watching his videos every single day. This means that there's quite a lot of eyes that are on him as well as on his project right here. Now, obviously not all the people that are watching him are gonna be able to go over the code or know what's going on with it or even have the time and energy to go and inspect this. However, as you may have seen with my PS Vita modification video, going down in the comments, you find that there are some people who are watching these videos who are way more knowledgeable about modifications than I ever will be. Likewise, Chris's content, which is all about like modifying your system with custom code that you write yourself, will attract people that will be very knowledgeable about this field and will know about this stuff and know if something is wrong. Knowing firsthand how hard it is to actually build up a sustainable YouTube career, I'm pretty sure that Chris wouldn't be happy to just throw that all away for a very quick profit. So then again, leave it to YouTubers to prove me wrong. Speaking of profit, why you can actually run this program completely free in your PowerShell right here, you can also buy it online for 10 bucks on Chris's website. Furthermore, Chris also has a YouTube partner program, which means that he has memberships where people can subscribe to him every month, and he also has advertisements which will give him income, and thus should also incentivize him to keep making this program in a way that it functions properly. For me, this combination of having a proven track record, having your reputation at stake, having an open source project with enough eyes on it to constantly check it, and having actual financial incentives to do the right thing, give me enough guarantee to trust that this program will very likely do what it says that it will do. As such, I've been using it to set up all of my computers over the last few weeks, and so far it's been an absolute treat in just getting some control back over Windows. I know that a lot of updates are there to give you more security on your system. However, especially right now when it came to like this weird update situation where everything crashed, I do think it's important to talk about, you know, the, the Windows updates and how 
how for a lot of people, they're really, really, really bothersome. And that will lead a lot of people, including myself, to go look out for solutions that will take back our control, even though a lot of these solutions aren't necessarily safer out there. Anyway, that's it for today. If you guys enjoyed this video and you want to support what I do, why not check out Overtime, my extra show for people who are supporting this channel via either Patreon, Twitch subscriptions, YouTube memberships, basically every platform for one dollar a month. I make extra videos where today what we're going to do is we're going to go and look at this laptop right here. About a month ago, I made a video about laptops and buying laptops and this was the second hand laptop that I bought and I've had it for a month. It's been on two trips with me right now. So I want to do like a quick overview, review sort of thing about what I liked about it, what I didn't like about it and my experience about it. So thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you all enjoyed and I'll see you all next time.